You know, we've been talking about investment, but I want you all to think about how do you invest in yourselves? Um, what opportunities do you give to yourselves? Uh, to help bring us that lesson today, our closing speaker is an Emmy Award-winning broadcaster with Root Sports, a UW softball great, a former professional baseball player, a mom, a wife, a survivor. Will you please welcome Angie Menting. You, you nailed it. Nailed it. Um, I never know. <laughs> I never know how to start one of these things. You know, that's the that's the hardest thing. So I guess. Um, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. My boobs are not really remarkable. <laughs> um, <laughs> they never have been. I, I married an ass and leg man, which is good. Um, <laughs> when I was, a, you know, an athlete, lean A. I've always kind of vacillated between a B and a C cup. But again, nothing really remarkable. I, I bound them like Barbara Streisand and Yentl when I played sports. I, I breastfed two kids. I, I took care of them. Um, but then um, my, my, my unremarkable boobs, um, here I am talking about them again. Uh, good news, as of October 5th of this year, they are six years cancer-free. I imagine, like a lot of you, you know, you, you try to do everything. I try to do everything. You know, how to put that 10 pounds of poop into a five-pound bag every single day. And I saw this letter from the doctor, you know? Um, I, I need to go get the mammogram, I need to go get the mammogram. And you do it, right? You shuffle the piles. You know, here's the bills I've got to pay, and that, and that mammogram letter it just kept going over into the other pile, like, I'm gonna get to it, I'm gonna get to it. And uh, lucky for me, my kids, I guess, didn't make, you know, their usual three trips to the emergency room a year. And we had extra, extra money in my flexible uh, spending account, the, the medical flexible spending account that I have. So I was like, all right, mammogram, I'm going to go do it. So, um, you know, it's a good idea not to have to wait until the end of the year, towards the end of the year, because again, with that medical flexible spending account, you can only get so much sunblock and Band-Aids with that thing, so use it. Um, but here's the thing, I know that, you know, all of you out there, you want to take care of all of the things, and this is whether or not you work at home, uh, you whether work outside the home, um, whether you're a mom or, or not, you want to be that friend that everybody can count on. You want to be that friend that never forgets uh, birthdays. I'm the friend that always forgets birthdays. Don't count on me. Um, you, you pack the lunches. You know, you, you know everything. Uh, first from my loins, he wants more peanut butter. Second from my loins, heavy on the jelly. Uh, you know, I know that his white baseball pants are by the television where he kicked them off and I've got to get those washed by tomorrow's baseball game. You do all of the things, but I want you to remember that you can't do all of the things if you're not there. You can't do all of the things if you don't take care of yourself. And waiting to find out that you have something like cancer won't make the cancer go away, although it will perhaps make you go away. So it's just so incredible, uh, incredibly important to remember to invest in yourself. Okay, so I get the awful news. I was in the shower, my phone rang because uh, I was carrying it around waiting. You know, I, they had to biopsy something. I'm like, I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, my husband, God love him, he's a hypochondriac, goes to the doctor once, twice a month, whether he needs to or not. <laughs> you know, it, my doctor hasn't seen me in 10 years. Like, I just, I, I, no, I, I don't get sick. I think I've had, what, three, four days, sick days in 25, 26 years. It just, it, it doesn't happen. So I get this phone call, and all of a sudden this woman's like telling me all these things, all these terms, and I, I don't know what they are, and I think you're wrong, or like, what number did you call? Are you sure? Like, what, no, what my name again? Give it to me again. And I'm trying to find something to write with, and I, again, I just got out of the shower, so now I'm like, I have this towel, and I'm draping, you know, a puddle of water behind me trying to find something to write with, and I stumble into the kitchen, and there's like my husband trying to talk to me, because of course he doesn't realize I'm on the phone, 
But then he sees my face, and he knows immediately, like, something is wrong. And I pull the phone away from my ear, and I tell him, I'm sorry. And I'm like, I still think that's just, I'm like, why? You know, like, that's what I thought. Like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm broken. I'm sorry that my unremarkable boobs, uh, yet perky, um, <laughs> are trying to kill me. And, and uh, I think that that's something that, you know, so many of us do is like, I don't have time for this, right? I don't have time for this, and I, I'm sorry that this is going to get in the way. So when you get smacked with the news, I think your mind goes in a million different directions. Oh my God, I'm not going to be there for like my kids. Um, getting married, and, and you start thinking goofy things like my husband doesn't have the skill set to clean those glass shelves in the refrigerator, and uh, they're always going to be sticky with milk. And it's just, um, I hope that you don't need a, a cancer diagnosis uh, to restack your priorities, but undoubtedly it does do that. Um, you, you have to, to be there. Uh, that, that is my thing for you. Like, my, my stressor on this is I want you to be there. I, I want um, you to see and experience so much. That was what was going through my mind. You know, do I, do I crumple? Um, or do I sort of wipe the tears from my face and spit at this imaginary foe? And, and cancer uh, or not, I think we all have those moments in life. You know, do I give up or do I get after it? And I hope that when that hurdle you know, shows up in front of you, you, you leap over that thing and you keep on running. And it might, it might catch you, but I hope you leap over it and I hope you keep on running. I often uh, bring up my husband, mostly to make fun of him. Um, but he's not just an incredible champion to me, but I often joke that he's the biggest feminist in our family, is which to say that he thinks that men and women should get paid the same amount to do the same job. Doesn't sound unreasonable, right? So he teaches at Seattle Pacific University, and one of his classes is focuses on the impact of Title IX. And it reminds me of just how far we have come, but also how far that we still have to go. Um, you know, how important it is to support women, because uh, men will support other men for uh, power positions, because it, it's easy, whether it's intentional or unintentional, it's easy because you see yourself in them, someone of the same sex. It's easy to see yourself in them. There are, of course, less women in those power positions. And also, gains were so hard, I think, for women for so many years um, that a lot of times we would get in these bad habits of like climbing over each other <laughs> just to get ahead. Um, and we got to stop doing that. Um, I think we're better at it, but we, we still sometimes um, you know, do that a little bit too much. I was elated when Kim Eng was hired as the first female general manager for the Marlins. And then I was saddened this week when uh, she stepped away. To put a point on the importance of um, supporting women in their endeavors, we've been talking about uh, Title IX a lot today, but just a few more things about it. Prior to Title IX, medical schools and law schools, they would limit the number of women to 15 or fewer, because they had to have kids. Fifth, not 15%, 15 or fewer. That's just crazy to exclude 50% of society. I think it's just so important that we, they're critical really, um, to support women, mentor women, but I also think it's really important that we mentor men. And I try to do that every single day to my sons. Unfortunately, I don't have daughters. But what I am raising are, you know, boys that are not only tolerant of strong women, but will seek them out. And I think that it's important that they see what a woman can achieve. And on the other side, you know, as women, that we emulate, that we follow, that we equal, that we surpass uh, the things that you admire in women around you. And this isn't just about women helping other women, and I want to keep harping on that. It's about men doing the same and changing the lens from which they see things. I mean, my dad, his view of women is very different than my son's. Very. <laughs> it's so important that men see women thriving in these positions because, you know, women in power are, 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 are increasing, but they're not 
quite where we need them to be. So we need to continue to have men uh, make those picks sometimes. So just, you know, keep that in mind that, you know, when we want to empower ourselves, realize, you know, we are 50% of society. Isn't that a funny thing? It's like 50.4 versus, oh, there, I said there wasn't going to be math. You said there wasn't going to be math. Um, but it's really 50-50, nearly, you know, in this society, 49.6. Uh, so 50.4. 49.6. I did it, didn't I? So just coming here and thinking about yammering to you about my perky, unremarkable boobs, I took an inventory of the impact of self-care for me. Six years so far. In that time, I moved three times. I built a house. I remodeled another one on Vashon Island. I watch my kids play hundreds of baseball games, basketball games, soccer games, golf matches. I saw the Mariners make the postseason. <laughs> no. um, I have mended a teenage broken heart. I have woke up dozens of times under a blanket of my two boys who crawled in bed with us, taken the family to cities around the world, skinny dipped with a friend in a lake on top of a mountain. I caved and bought two dogs, and by my calculation, probably enjoyed over a thousand bottles of wine in those six years. <laughs> and then this past season, I was fortunate to be a part of an all women's spring training broadcast. Jen Mueller, also a part of that. And then later that season, I became the first woman in the broadcast booth to ever com color commentate on a Major League Baseball game for the Seattle Mariners. Yeah. And not once, but several times. And the Mariners have crazy talented women. I, I, it's only a what, two hour show, so I don't want to name them all. Katie Griggs at the top of that organization. But I'd also have to thank, this is where I go to that other 50% of the society, Kevin Martinez and my boss, John Bradford, who entrusted me to, uh, to take on that role. Well, I, John Bradford pushed me. He shoved me rudely. Um, again, women helping women, but also men, the other 50% of society chipping in. And I think it's so important, continually, especially when we talk about women's health care, that um, we need to make sure that, that men are on our side and understanding the importance of women's health care and the impact uh, that it has. <laughs> now, I could have guessed some of the things six years ago, like the wine. Um, but professionally, I'm not sure I planned on making that history, and that's the thing. You never know what your next six years will entail. Um, but you want to find out, and you need to take care of yourself to find out what's going to happen in your next six years, and the six years after that, and the six years after that. Uh, you do not need a cancer diagnosis to reprioritize, to refocus, to reach out, and to empathize and empower someone around you. Um, something I've been harping on with my kids lately, which is a reminder to myself, I project a lot, um, pick something small, okay? Uh, but do a little a lot. Don't do a lot a little, but do a little a lot. Um, meet someone you believe is maybe a fence sitter once a week for coffee or lunch or just check in with an email. Lend your brand to something um, once a month that aligns with your goals of empowering women or once every two months. Figure out what it, that is you know, for you and what that could look like. Maybe it's just scanning that QR code and making sure you give to an organization like this that is helping. Uh, Virginia Mason Franciscan Health is one of those organizations uh, for me that um, really has a lot of our same circles overlapping. And I thank you so much for your social messaging. It's critical about early detection and uh, also for their support today. So thank you so much to Virginia Mason Franciscan Health. I hope everybody today uh, walks away prioritizing yourself. You know, it, it's if you know about the quadrants, it's always very easy to do urgent and important. Those things are always the things that get done, okay? But we need to find out, you know, in our own hearts and our own minds, what's important to us. 
maybe not urgent, but it's important, and focus, and take the time to focus on those things that are important. Cancer screenings, colonoscopy, starting your side hustle, whatever it is, you know, prioritize yourself. That is self-care. Maybe it's just getting yourself a massage. For me, I don't have a marriage counselor. I have a maid that comes to our house. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's my self-care, exactly. Um, that's how I take care of me. Again, I think folks, uh, so many of us are in this room have come so far in so many ways, and I wanna go back to before women were supported by programs like Title IX, and remember, Title IX, not just about sports. I know sports gets the most uh, you know, focus, and particularly with a group like this, but it's, it's more than that. Female physicians made up just eight 0.9% of the workforce. You compare that today, that number's at 36%. Women make up the majority of enrolled college students and bachelor's degree earners in the United States now. But folks, it is going to take an even, steady, unrelenting uh, investment in yourself and women uh, around you so that these monikers, like the first woman to ever do this or that, die and fall by the wayside. Um, I, I do appreciate every time I do sort of um, do something for the first time, but at the same time, I just can't wait until it's the norm and not the exception. Uh, believe me when I say, and I hope you hear the sincerity in my voice, I'm so glad to be here today. Thank you so much for having me.